Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! What are the kingdom mysteries? What are the keys? Please, I beseech you in the name of Jesus. I can go down my knees for you if you want me to. To listen and pay attention to what I'm telling you. Because for some of you, this will be the lifeline. It will be literally the lifeline between now and the, the continuity of your effective living. Please pay attention. This is more than a sermon. Tonight's message is an instrument of deliverance that God is bringing to you. And for those following online, I want you to pay attention. You may need to call somebody and say, connect now. You are about to hear something and receive an impartation. Do you know that there are people scheduled to die every week? Right now is Sunday. There are people based in the realm of the spirit. They are already dead. By Saturday, you will see Abba, that you found your way here or you have connected yourself here by the privilege of God's grace. I announce to you again that plot is destroyed forever. All right, let's write. When we say I shall not die, it is beyond just mere speaking. It takes more than a wish. There are kingdom keys that have been allotted for the saints. Remember that victory in this kingdom is light dependent. Are we together? Key number one, are you ready? The first key based on the word of God that guarantees longevity is submitting to Jesus who is the resurrection and the life. Write it down, please. The first key that guarantees longevity is submitting to Jesus, who the Bible calls the resurrection and the life. Your encounter with the resurrection and the life is your surest guarantee. The resurrection and the life. In John 4 and verse 16, Jesus said, John 4 16 please give it to us my apologies John 11 John 11 from verse 25 to 26 John 11 Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life I am and the life he that believe in me though he were dead yet shall he live 26 and whosoever liveth and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? It's up to you to answer. Are we together? So you must submit. It is a risk to know that Satan is determined to cut short your life if allowed. And then not submit genuinely to the resurrection and the life. When you are sick, medically speaking, you don't run to a carpenter for help. Is that true? You don't run to a carpentry shop. You run to a pharmacist or to a hospital. The one who addresses your situation. Jesus did not just call himself the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus did not just call himself the apostle of our faith. Jesus did not just call himself the high priest. In this regard, he calls himself the resurrection and the life. So your first key to walking in longevity biblically is submitting to Jesus the resurrection and the life number two very quickly is someone learning the second biblical key that is responsible for the longevity of the saints that gives you immunity and victory over untimely death is the fear of the Lord the fear of the Lord, the spirit of reverence. Please write it down. The fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27. Proverbs 10, 27. The Bible says the fear of the Lord prolonged days. Look at it. The fear of the Lord prolonged days. 
but the years of the wicked shall be shortened is that in your bible the fear of the lord what does it mean to fear god it means to honor him it means to revere him it means to respect him and the clearest proof of the fear of the lord is obedience the fear of the lord prolonged days Proverbs chapter 9. Let's look at 10 and 11. Proverbs 9, 10 and 11. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. 11. It says for by me, the fear of the Lord now, thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Shout a loud amen. amen. I declare that the baptism of the fear of the Lord will rest upon your heart tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 1 and 2, Proverbs chapter 3, we're examining the second key. Please do not forget what I'm teaching you. Number one, submitting to the authority and the lordship of Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Now number two, the fear of the Lord. It says, my son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commands. Verse 2. It says, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Verse 3. Oh, well, just one and two. That's fine. Length of days and peace shall they add to thee. In 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, let's read verse 14. This was Solomon's encounter with the God of the Bible in a dream. It says, 1 Kings 3, 14, And if thou wilt walk in my ways, and keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen your days. So longevity is not just the issue of claiming. There is a way that you fear the Lord determined to obey him. That no devil will cut short your life before your time. Number three, because I want us to pray tonight. Are you ready? The third key that the Bible teaches is the power of scripture based confession. The power of scripture based confession. You want to drive untimely death far from you? There is a role that your mouth and your speaking has to play. Psalms 34 from verse 12 down to 14. Please give it to us. Psalms 34, 12 to 14. He said, what man, Apostle Peter repeated this now in the New Testament. What man is he that desired life and loveth many days? that he may see good it's a question who is the person who is interested in having long life and many days what's the condition 13 it says keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking deceit or guile he, he tells you that every time you speak your words have an implication on your longevity or otherwise now most people think it does not matter there are negative words this is not about some Pentecostalism there is a there is a kingdom way that we speak even from a medical standpoint there you begin to speak negatively negatively about your life and about others you are on your way to your grave early and it should not be so hallelujah I don't die Nigeria the realm of the spirit does not care whether you are joking it records it and it becomes a tool for execution hallelujah there are some things you should not say about yourself no no it's not about being a baby Christian or being mature this is the modus operandi of the kingdom if you desire to walk in longevity to walk in the fullness of the days ordained for you your speaking matters hallelujah 
Is someone already learning? Speakings. Proverbs 18.21. Popular scripture. 18.21. Proverbs. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What is the fruit of death? I mean death and life are both fruits. And it's interesting that the same tongue can produce any one of them. In the name of Jesus, this is the day the Lord has made. I declare that I rejoice in it and I am glad. Hallelujah. I enjoy longevity and health, not longevity and pain. In the name of Jesus, long life is my portion in Christ. And I decree and declare. It says, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven. And canst thou establish the dominion in the earth thereof. You don't speak death speak negative things you know i was watching i was having a meeting with the leaders i think a week or two ago and then um the convention kenneth kenneth copeland's convention was was ongoing and i was just looking at that man in his 80s and he was standing unassisted i remember many many years ago he would speak literally over the various parts of his body with childlike faith and many people who were bragging and said there's nothing, they've long gone. And this man is still standing. Only fools, Bishop Oedipo will say, doubt proof. Be careful when people arrogantly downplay the principles of the kingdom. They will not guarantee you when tragedy strikes. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of meeting a few old people. Some of the oldest fathers of faith in this nation. Hallelujah. Yes. And every time I have an opportunity to talk to them, I usually would ask them the secret. Please, daddy or whoever, please, what can you share with me if there is one key to long life? What would it be? And in most cases, among the things that they share, it will be about speaking well, speaking well, speaking correctly. Hallelujah. This is more than positive confession. This is not just psychology, although that is profitable in itself. But we are talking of a scripture-based confession. You are declaring to create. You are declaring to maintain. Are we together now? Words are so powerful that Jesus himself calls himself the word, the logos of God. I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's my confession. I truly believe it. That I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Sing it one more time from your heart. I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So from tonight, Koinonia, hear me. Teach your children. Husband, change your confession. Wife, change your confession. Parents, change your confession. Children, man of God, leaders, start speaking to be consistent with the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. I decree and declare that the life of God flows through me. I decree and declare that length of days is my portion in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Many, many people made noise. They laughed at those confessing the word. Some of those people are not alive today. And some of the people with childlike faith who kept speaking after many decades, they are still standing. Ah. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy is the lord please hear me ladies and gentlemen I want to tell you that words matter. 
words matter the first fall and destruction of a man came because of something he heard when man fell the Lord came to the garden and said Adam where are thou he said I heard your voice but I hid because I was naked and he said who told you you expose your ears to something and to someone and in addition to speakings manage the things that get into your eye and your ear gate ladies and gentlemen please hear me these are not elementary spiritual things at all most of you authorize demons to begin to afflict you because you expose yourself to content that you were not supposed to expose your mind to hallelujah be careful from reading all kinds of nonsense magic books there are people today and let me say it especially to younger people who are in ministry let your search for revelation not lead you to demonic things where you go and encounter all kinds of spirits books of the dead because you are trying to access realms 15 dimensions of consciousness and you start reading those things until you find yourself there you come back with all kinds of familiar spirits sufficient for your growth and your excelling is the truth that is contained in scripture the bible says many listen it says many miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples that were not recorded in this book give it to us john 20 please the last verse that would be verse what now verse the last please look for it for us john 20 the last verse i want to show you that scripture it says many miracles that Jesus did John chapter 20 and many verse 30 thank you many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not written in this book next verse please 31 it says but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name so it is true that it is not everything that happened that was recorded in scripture but by the intelligence of the spirit the scripture as contained in this already has with the breath of the spirit the leadership of the spirit can supply you every kind of growth you seek it doesn't mean that extra biblical materials concordances and all of the rest are bad but you must be guided there are many believers who have not been guided and they started reading all kinds of books books that start teaching you about consciousness and start exposing you you start exposing some of those things they are saying are not lies but they are very deep spiritual things it takes a level of stability in the spirit and conviction to dare those materials because they sustain the power to sway you be careful in a bid to look for a salmon many of us have traveled into hellfire to go and get messages there and you never return again because you got there in a search for mysteries and and people return with all kinds of things may we be grounded and established in the truth in the name of jesus christ In America today there are many young children who are already demonized because of being exposed to several materials unfortunately there are many institutions that teach some of these courses and even recommend them to children and they open up themselves and you find children asking parents questions that they cannot answer parents may God grant us grace hear me may God grant grace to know where to send your child to just because the school fees is much does not mean it is a good school there are many many schools that you can pay whatever million and with it you are paying the money for your child's death we need to manage it because sometimes in a bit to justify the amount of money that was spent people introduce all kinds of programs they bring all kinds respectfully speaking this is these are my opinions based on scripture all kinds of therapies and psychologies and some of these people don't fear God and they start asking the children question until until something happens to your children that you do not understand somebody shout God forbid God 
prophetic declarations that are consistent with scripture prophetic declarations that are consistent with scripture hallelujah number four what is the fourth biblical key that controls longevity are you ready honor to parents honor to parents honor to parents both physical and spiritual honor to parents Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3 please give it to us honor to parents the fourth key now children it says obey your parents in the Lord please take note of the expression in the Lord it didn't say children obey your parents anyhow whatever they say mm -mm. children obey your parents in the Lord that means the parents are not the final say. The word of God is final say. I need to say this. I am an advocate of honor, but we need to be careful because many people have been derailed because of this scripture and because it was misunderstood. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Verse 2, it says, honor your father and your mother which is the first commandment with promise verse 3 that it may be well with thee and that thou mightest live long upon the earth please look up the spirit of rebellion the spirit of dishonor will always cut short the life of the victim unfortunately our generation except god helps us Corporately, we're beginning to embrace dishonor. It's beginning to be fashionable. People say it doesn't matter, it's my life. But you see, there are laws. I pray that dishonor will not make our generation cost because of the ill speakings that come from the pain of parents. Hallelujah. There are many, many people today that it is not well with them because they have secured the causes and the ill speakings of parents and let me tell you when it has to do with parents bar whether they are born again or not by reason of being parents or being in a position of parents there is authority that was given to them they can speak and the realm of the spirit will obey and let me declare over someone if either by your mistake or maybe your past or not having any knowledge you have secured the cause or the ill speaking of any parent any father any mother physically or spiritually by the mystery of the blood and the mercy of God that statement is cancelled right now yeah. hallelujah now I must bring a disclaimer we men of God like scriptures like this unfortunately because it has been a useful tool for manipulation through the years. There is a balance to this. It does not mean just because people are asked to honor leaders, spiritual leaders especially, it does not mean that people should remove their brains and throw away and become children and become fools. No. There is intelligence in our faith work. Are we together now? Yes. So there is a balance. However, honor still remains a potent spiritual law that is responsible for longevity honor your father and your mother some of you by this teaching you may need to call even if it's your physical parents and just tell them listen I'm sorry the other day I shouted and insulted you and said go to hell it's just my foolishness accept that I'm just a child I came for koinonia and God used apostle to drum sense into my head mama I am sorry I desire to live long and some of these are little children who insult everybody based on the movie, hold their hands, tap it two or three times and sit them down, show them a scripture and say, listen, young man, if you want to live long, do not make it marketable to insult everybody. Don't say it's just a little boy. The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Not the rod of wickedness, the rod of correction. Hallelujah. Is someone learning honor honor to parents honor to fathers when God plants you within a ministry honor the authority structure that he has put there are we together this spirit of rebellion that many have carried has has become their own becoming you continue to spell destruction for yourself it ought not to be so there is a way that the kingdom operates 
If we are together, say amen. amen. Honor to parents. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 20. Proverbs 20, 20. In fact, when we read it, let's see how we can try NIV. The Bible says, who so cursed his father or his mother. Listen carefully. He said, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Let me tell you how it works in the spirit. If a father fights his son, he loses his honor. If a son fights his father, he loses his life. There are allocations to these offenses in the spirit. You see that? Yes. Same scripture, 2020. If a man causes his father or mother, he says his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. This is true. There are many, many people who have put themselves in this unfortunate condition, physically and spiritually across the globe because of lack of intelligence. And remember, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Number five. Thank you, Jesus. Is someone learning? What is the fifth key? Are you ready? Engaging the mystery of the communion. The fifth key that is responsible for longevity. Engaging with understanding the mystery of the communion. Engaging the mystery of the communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, please, from verse 24. Apostle Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth and he was now speaking about the Lord's body. We're reading to 30. Please pay attention. And he that had, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 25. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now he begins to warn. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. 27. He says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, it is that serious that it has a spiritual implication. You shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. To 30 now. It says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. What does it mean to eat and drink unworthily? Without discernment and without revelation and without honor. It says, he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's read 30 together. One, two, read. For this cause... Many are weak, many are sickly among you, and many sleep. He didn't say few. That means there are many people today who have gone to the grave and their offense is that they did not discern the Lord's body. I've had all kinds of teachings and opinions about the communion. I can tell you by the privilege of God's grace, I have studied my Bible. The communion with understanding is a deep spiritual mystery it can be idolized unfortunately like it has happened respectfully speaking across the body where people have turned the communion like a like a charm that does not contain any power do you understand remember you are the one who made the bread and you are the one who made the cup and you are now taking it. So it is not that bread and cup that will give you life. There is a revelation that releases the power of God upon those tokens of communion. I am an advocate of the communion, but I am not an advocate of religiosity without revelation. The key is understanding, not ritual. You can be involved in the ritual of the communion and believe me, you will not receive anything from it. Hallelujah. There are people who just carry wafers, just squeeze it or bread. They just squeeze one slice or one loaf and just take tea or take something and believe they took the communion. No. The communion is not about hunger. Remember in the book of 1 Corinthians, there were people who were taking it unworthily. 
because at that time it was wine and Paul found out that people were getting drunk after you know the remaining part of the, the, the communion set that they leave when the service is over. Some people were taking it and don't mind all these guys. And Paul had to preach and say, You guys are making a mess of this thing. You can bring damnation upon yourself. There are stories of people who, with childlike faith, believed in the mystery of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And they engaged the communion with understanding. And it flushed out all kinds of demonic things in their body. You know the power and the mystery of blood. You see, in communicating spiritual truth, it is not really the activity that carries power. It is the understanding that supports what you are doing. Are we together? But I can tell you by the authority of scripture, in my life and based on the experience of the patriarchs, and those who have gone ahead of us the communion with understanding is a deep and powerful mystery and what you are taking does not have to be color red for it to be communion even if it is water and wafers is is a mystery you just take that to help your mind assimilate and believe communion there are times with understanding you can gather your family and say in the name of Jesus we stand by faith believing in the authority of the word of God and you engage that communion and watch the wonder working power of the blood and body of Jesus hallelujah let me give you two more scriptures in Exodus chapter 12 let's go to 7 and 8 then we'll jump to 12 and 13 watch this the mystery of the blood now and they shall take of the blood the angel of death is about to pass over the land of Egypt and strike it on the two side posts on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it verse 8 and they shall eat the flesh that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it jump to verse 12 please for sake of time it says for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord thy God verse 13 it says and the blood shall be to you for a what a token upon the houses where ye are and when I see the blood I will pass over you and the plague shall not come upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt go to verse 23 verse 23 now it says for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and upon the two side posts the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses and to smite you the fifth key is engaging the mystery of the communion if someone is with me say amen. amen please I want you to pay attention to what I'm teaching you because it contains tremendous power tremendous power are you ready for number six we'll soon find somewhere to pray what is the sixth key that controls longevity are you ready master the art of spiritual warfare master the art of spiritual warfare mm, there is a warfare dimension for longevity master the art of spiritual warfare the Bible is very clear as to the fact that Satan and his cohorts using the guise of witchcraft wizardry necromancy sorcery activities of dark power that he will continually launch attack against the saints he says and i will build my church and the gates of hell jesus recognized the presence of the gates of hell even jesus is called the head of principalities and powers the Bible recognizes their existence. It will be child's play to just ignore it and believe that without engaging the world through intelligence, that by default, those arsenals will not come. Even Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and did not find anything. 
spiritual warfare you must know how to take authority over the spirit of death you must know how to take authority over infirmity over destructions over wasters this is the assignment of spiritual warfare let's look at two or three scriptures thank you jesus ezekiel chapter 13 let's start from 17 ezekiel 13 17. likewise son of man set thy face against the daughters of thy people he says give us niv give us niv i want you to understand what is there okay son of man set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own imagination prophesy against them let's hurry up next verse it says and say this is what the sovereign lord says woe to the women who sew magic charms on their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their head in order to ensnare people is that in your bible he said what to these kinds of people they tie all kinds of things they get they fraternize with the realm of the spirit as tokens and mediums to ensnare people will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own 19. he says you have profaned me among my people for a few handfuls of barley and scraps of bread by lying to my people who listen to lies you have killed those who should not have died and have spared those who should not have lived 20. it says therefore this is what the sovereign lord says i am against your magic charms which you ensnare people like birds and i will tear them from your arms i will set free the people that you have ensnared like birds uh-huh next verse please we are reading down to 23, 21. I will tear off your veils and save my people from your hands and they will no longer fall prey to your power. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I, I am the Lord because you disheartened the righteous with your lies when I had brought them no grief and because you encouraged the wicked not to turn from their evil ways and so to save their lives. Last verse therefore you will no longer see false visions or practice divination i will save my people from your hands and then you will know that i am the lord if you believe that say amen, amen. brothers and sisters i i hate to play with your mind but believe me when i tell you there are people on earth who have fraternized with the devil perpetually access to divination access to all kinds of sorcery necromancy activities with the constellation making use of mediums animals all against the lives and the destinies of people this is true there is victory in christ but it is engaged with knowledge the victory in christ does not happen arbitrarily not even the death on the cross automatically save sinners until they place their faith by believing in their heart and declaring the lordship of jesus that is only when that was the only condition for salvation to be activated so jesus has died risen exalted and yet many people still go to hell that is the same way salvation healing deliverance has been purchased but just believing that because it is finished in christ it means it is finished in your life without engaging it it will not happen what does warfare entail number one standing based on the word of god to enforce your authority warfare entails standing to enforce your authority based on the word of god not based on emotions not based on sentiments not based on religious chants and rituals the basis for the believer's victory is what is written not what i want not what i wish there are many chants and rituals that sincerely and respectfully speaking are only a waste of time. The only component in a believer's speaking and prayer that commands power is that which is in line with scripture. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 11. Proverbs 1 11. 
It says, My son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Next verse. It says, Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. Reading to 16, verse 13. We shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our house with spoil. Look at the wicked imaginations. Cast in thy lot among us let us all have one purse 15 it says my son walk down not in the way with them refrain from the foot of their path 16 the last verse it says for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood believers please look at me spiritual warfare from a biblical standpoint and from a standpoint of victory is necessary for maintaining your longevity for as long as you live you remain a candidate for satan's attack a potential candidate the bible says now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph are we together Paul said, I desire to come to you once and again, but Satan hindered us. Satan is still on earth. There, the Bible has never told us that his ministry has ended. Read your Bible. The Bible tells us that victory over him is settled. But the Bible never says Satan has been prohibited from doing the things that he's doing. He still runs to and fro like a roaring, like, like, like a, uh, what they call it now? That he runs to and fro like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. May he not find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and haven't done all to stand. Stand. Why would Paul be teaching you about the, the warfare armory? Are we together? He says to put the whole armor of God. Remember, it was the same Paul that gave us the exegesis of the, the Pauline epistle. The entire exegesis of redemption. Yet he teaches you that it is true that you are seated, exalted with Christ. But haven't done all to stand. Stand. For many of us, we are not consistent with our prayer. For others, we are consistent with prayer but from a standpoint of fear and defeat. Listen, you don't pray to make victory happen. You pray to establish victory that is already in Christ. There is a big difference. There is praying and you feel, okay, now let me push a little more and the devil will give way. As emotional as that sounds, you are already defeated. Believe me, except this Bible is not true. Nobody prays from a standpoint of weakness and wins. So spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing, I have taught you, it is not the prayer that produces the victory. The prayer simply transports that which is finished in Christ and stamps it as a reality upon your life. Is it not amazing that Jesus prayed before, during, and even after his resurrection, today that he's seated, exalted as Lord and Christ, he's still making intercession for the saints. Is he not conscious of his victory over the saints that he's still making intercession? Why will he still be interceding when he said it is finished? The fact that Jesus is still praying for you should let you know that he's aware that Satan is still on earth waging war against the saints. Why would Jesus be interceding for you? He would have said, don't say anything again. Victory is sure. Jesus, the intercessor, proves that evil is still at work. Hallelujah. You must master the art of spiritual warfare. Believers, please hear me. The times that we live in right now, especially if you're a man and a woman of God in ministry, you must pray. You must understand warfare. I'm speaking with respect to longevity, but warfare covers every aspect of your life. You are privileged to lead a ministry. You must pray for your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, protect them. Preserve them. You don't know who is traveling and who is returning. It is your responsibility. Part of your priesthood responsibility is to lift up the people that God has given to you. Listen to what Jesus said. All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost lost through what various ways 
you can ask the Lord, believe me, I'm not exaggerating. More than 80% of my prayers is not for myself. Lord, help your people to encounter you. Protect them. Protect them. That was the wisdom of Job. The Bible says Job prayed for his children just in case. Just in case they went out to party and they returned back like madmen. Just in case he prayed. Parents, do you pray for your children or do you just give them money? Leaders, do you pray for the people God has given you? Don't take Satan for granted. It's not about fear. Satan is determined even over Jesus. I hope you know that Satan does not fear. There is no record in scripture that Satan is associated with fear. He flees as a result of an instruction, not fear. Satan is every other thing but fearful and foolish. Two things you cannot attribute to Satan. Hallelujah. Don't sit down and let the devil destroy your health and your life. One month you find out that something is beginning to happen to you. You got up in the morning and your legs is as if you cannot walk. Later by evening, it looks like it's your back. The next day you find out all four children, you, you go to your office and find out files are getting missing. These are signs. Don't sit down until it gets complicated and destroys you. From its infancy, you attack it in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. This is a semblance of hell and darkness. Therefore, I stand by the authority that is in the Lord Jesus Christ and I, I rebuke this. It is your kingdom responsibility to understand warfare. There are some of you right now, the darkness that seems to be, to be roaming around your life, I'm praying for you that you will have the grace to wake up and take responsibility. I have a responsibility to pray for you, but pray for me, pray for me has landed many people to their grave. You must take responsibility as God grants you grace. Wake up in the night, especially when the seasons are already giving you a sign that this is the devil attacking you. Abide with me fast. Falls the even tide, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When other help us fall and comfort flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with. Jesus, when it was time for him to get to the cross, he took out time to pray. He prayed to build stamina. He prayed, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup of me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Let me give you the last one, and then we'll pray. Is someone learning? The seventh key as revealed from scripture that controls longevity is walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom proverbs chapter 3 from verse 13 proverbs 3 13 we're reading down to 18 happy is the man that findeth wisdom koinonia please look up and the man that getteth understanding next verse please he said, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. 15. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. 16 now. Length of days. There you find it again. With wisdom. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. The Bible says collect both. The right and the left hands are open for you as far as wisdom is concerned. Wisdom is a giver. Don't collect wealth and riches and live length of days. 17. Reading to 18 now. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness. All her paths are peace. She is a tree of life. A tree of what? Life. 
to them that lay hold upon her and happy is everyone that retaineth her listen there is a very direct relationship between working in wisdom and longevity for instance paying attention to your health is wisdom paying attention to your health revelations 22 please give it to us verse 2 paying attention to your health what you eat the bible says and in the midst of the street and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations let me tell you believers there are times that you may do everything well and kill yourself simply because of carelessness and lack of wisdom there are many people today this is the balance because people focus on the spirituality of longevity and then they forget the other aspects like that which pertains onto their health I showed you our medical stand we have an intelligent team of medical doctors and even though we are a ministry that believes in signs and wonders there has been an advocacy for a long time in the body of Christ as in a bid to demonstrate the excellency of the divine life which is true subliminally we men of God have programmed members and programmed people into rejecting anything that has to do with medicine or the science of wellness we have thrown it away and said it does not matter the Bible says man shall live by two things one bread two words there is the physical aspect there is the spiritual aspect man does not live by words alone and man does not live by bread alone if your words are correct and your bread is wrong you will die if your bread is correct and the words are wrong you will die both bread and words have to be in place this is Jesus teaching now are we together now for many of us you have done well the words are correct the spiritual investments are correct but my goodness there is death in the pot in fact let's go to that scripture death in the pot elijah let me search for it now death in the pot it, second kings 4 from verse 38 second kings 4 38 and elisha came to gilgal and there was death in the land famine now and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he said unto his servant um can you give us niv again let me make reference to niv i just want your understanding right he says he said to his servant put on a large pot and cook some stew for this man reading to 41 next verse one of them went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine whatever that is we know it is not good he found a wild vine. He gathered some of its gods and filled the fold of his cloak. When he returned, he cut them into the pot of stew. Though no one knew what they were. 40. The stew was poured out for the men, but as they began to eat, remember they were prophets too, they cried out, O man of God, there is death in the pot how many pots today have death in it there are many pots in restaurants that have death there are many pots in our homes you think it is food you are eating the prophet said death is not only found in the grave it can be found even in the pot you can cast the one in the grave but have you casted the death that is in the pot and they could not eat it 41 Elisha said get some flour and he put it into the pot and said serve it to the people to eat and there was nothing harmful in the pot listen ladies and gentlemen can I be honest with you there are many many believers and the unfortunate thing is that because largely in Africa and Nigeria we come from a background of deprivation please listen when God begins to bless us 
the first thing we focus on is getting exterior things to prove that our life is working rather than focusing on our health so chances are excellent that when things begin to work out you want to get a car you want to get a house you want to get a nice cloth and people say my god things are changing in your life and then we punish ourselves dying inside and looking at life outside there are many people who are careless over their bodies and their health today and sincerely they have the power to invest just a little in their health there are many believers who hate medical checkup they say no this is demonic there are many believers i've told you that science and medical people will tell us that many diseases would have been solved if the people were attentive enough to detect it at infancy and to deal with it most people resort to medicine as a last resort i have taught you here ladies and gentlemen and for some of you who may be hearing it for the first time medicine is not anti-spirituality my perspective of medicine i hope you know that luke was a doctor he was the disciple of jesus dr luke hallelujah it's true that jesus rose up from the dead but what about those who took care of his body for three days? The body did not just lie down in the cold on the cross. Someone wrapped, the woman said she came to clean the body. So there is a place for medicine. Listen, listen. If you don't believe this, you will, you will rubbish yourself. It is true that divine health and healing is real. Don't get me wrong. But remember, it is a journey of transition in the spirit to attain onto that point where you can walk in health in experience. And while you are on that journey, by the time you are afflicted and you pray, and it looks like nothing is happening, ladies and gentlemen, even if something is happening, it is wise to consult the doctors. If you are truly healed, medicine will not fight your miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are people dying in silence. Your heart is palpitating. You almost cannot, you can't climb the stairs. You don't know what is wrong. At least let them tell you what is wrong. Then you can now choose. If you want to go the path of faith, you are not going on blind faith. Hallelujah. Yes. Madam, you try to conceive once, twice, three times it looks like it's not working don't just sit down and say i know it is a demon in my spirit. go and see a doctor have a discussion let them find out what is wrong then if it defines medicine that's why god put both the doctors and us respectfully speaking i tell you believers are very careless over their health very very careless hallelujah there are many of us who continue to eat all kinds of things including overeating i respect your perspective about food but let me give you an honest advice even if fasting did not have any spiritual reward i can tell you ask anybody fasting eating every day anytime anytime you see food is lost you have to repent the name of that lost is gluttony and it kills it kills hallelujah and by the way, let me tell you, don't say, I am not very fat. It doesn't mean you are free. It doesn't mean you are free. Hear what I'm saying now. So don't get into that deception that until you look like you, are, you have weight and then... Mm -mm. There are many people who are about dying. Diabetes, all kinds of things. Kidney failure, different troubles in their bodies and they don't care. Until the day they collapse. For some of you, by this teaching... You may need to go to and do a medical checkup. What are you afraid of? Do a medical checkup. If they say you are fine, has that not strengthened your faith? Hallelujah. Pay attention to the kind of water you drink as God grants you grace. Pay attention to the kind of food you eat. Many of us, you see food that is already beginning to spoil. Plus, Jesus might not say that. Amen. You just warm it in the microwave and death in the pot. You want to find out more about nutrition? Don't, I'm, I'm not the person to, there are many people who are gifted and grace. Go to the medical stand. They will guide you. It is not seen to be under very good organic supplements. They can help you. 
Many of these things we keep taking and feeling like we are rich. It is death. Minimize some of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And more than minimizing these things, please, I impart upon you the grace to fast. Even if you don't want to pray, just fast and sleep with no food. It is still a level of liberty you are administering to your body. Hallelujah. There are people who will never drink up to one bottle of water in a day. They will drink five bottles, Sprite, Coca-Cola, any other one. And you see people in a restaurant, four wraps of swallow and three kinds of soup, half of chicken, only you. And then three bottles and then one tiny pure water you are this is death I, I i i hate to be a bearer of bad news but i owe you a responsibility to tell you it is not the manifestation of wealth and we have all kinds of cultural things i suffered now is my time you you, you want to live long remember the last key walking in wisdom Please laugh but pay attention. Laugh but pay attention. Hallelujah. Laugh but pay attention. And you know in many cultures, the proof of honor is food. The proof of honor is what? So one person can visit five families between 12 to 6. And everywhere he goes, you went here, they gave you yam. You just went to say hi to the other neighbor, there's pounded yam. Then the other one, there's rice. The other one, there's fish. And you ate all. Appa. The leaves are for the healing of the nations. I don't know about you, but this man standing before you by the grace of God is still here for a long time. As far as the program of God demands, not out of fear. Do not die the death of a fool through carelessness. Let me encourage you again. Listen, do you know between age zero and age 20, there is a biological strategy for your feeding and for your living? Between age 20 to 40, there is a formula. Between 40 and 50, 60, there is a formula. There are things your body doesn't want. You say, I'm a youth. You, are, you can be a youth in your mind. But as far as the length of days is concerned, time is going. And you need to begin to adjust yourself through maturity. And don't bring death to yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. I repeat again. There's miracle service coming. But ladies and gentlemen, for some of you, you need to go and begin to examine yourself. Is it death that is happening to me? Leave the issue of the dreams and the rest. We're praying. But what could be the issue right now? Why is it that I'm a young man of 25, yet I cannot breathe well? I climb the stairs just four, four stairs up, and I'm already breathing. What is wrong? Please help me. Could it be them? Okay, just do some exercise. Take care of yourself. What could be the problem? Maybe you are not taking water. Cardiovascular issues have killed more people. Maybe even than demons. I impart upon you grace to walk in wisdom. Supernatural grace to walk in wisdom. Supernatural grace to walk in wisdom. Another example of walking in wisdom is walking with the wise. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not challenging your opinion, but let me tell you the truth. Things like drinking and smoking and all of these vices where you dump all kinds of junk into your body, you are killing yourself. You are killing yourself very fast, not even slowly. Apostle, it does not matter. It's your life. But you see, in taking decisions, it is wicked and selfish to not think about your children and not think about those connected to you as you take decisions. Are we together now? Yes. There are many people today who through their carelessness, they have left liabilities for society simply because they were not thoughtful enough. 
any major decision you are about to take in life especially your health i want you to think about all those who are connected to you what will happen now if i die some of you for instance you came from non-christian families and you are the only christian who is holding the banner of the gospel while waiting for the younger ones to grow if you are careless with your life and you pass on now what becomes of them when you are thoughtful you will not be careless with your life and your body what happens to you now if you pass on leaving three or four children who are barely in primary school it's, it was not an attack that killed you just carelessness with your health let me tell you this my deliverance over this issue of health came I've shared it with you at the end of the year when I'm doing my personal retreat I gauge my progress against many indices my spiritual growth mental transformation health and wellness relationships finances purpose and all of that and for three years consecutively I found out that the worst performing area in my life was my health for very justifiable reasons I could travel for a meeting return back in the night return back I had to make up my mind to say mr. man if you die and you kill yourself let it be known to you that you killed yourself because I know that God loves me sincerely he has invested his love and his jealousy upon my life and I made up my mind I said no more even if it is one step at a time I will begin to correct it this is a prophetic word for someone right now and for somebody the truth is you have the means God has helped you it's time to be serious he that walks with the wise shall be wise you are in a house where there's smoke carbon monoxide all the time and you are just inhaling this with your children you have the money to move to a better place please get out of that place for the sake of the safety of your children you are in a room there is a jerry can of kerosene there is a jerry can of petrol it next to your bed your nose is directly touching the the petrol while you are sleeping and you have five million naira ten million naira in your account when you die what is going to happen to the money we need to learn to be wise I've I've told you the purpose of resources is for efficiency and time redemption don't pile millions and billions in your account and be cutting short your days because of selfishness greed you have a car of 20 30 million lying down in your house and you cannot put hundred thousand naira to invest in your health it is not wise I'm sorry if I'm harsh we're wrapping up but I need to say this I rather have a car of one million naira part and have a body of one billion naira health wise it was a wise bargain you can't be having cars and houses estates and mansions and then to invest in your health is a problem there are many people who cannot spend 20,000 naira they can go to a restaurant a priority restaurant and spend 500,000 in a moment just proving a point but for their health it is often said that health is wealth a dying man has the desire to get his health back not his businesses back not the estates back one of the greatest contributions you can make in a life let me tell you is helping them to know God and love God and helping them to live healthy as much as possible when you are buying birthday gifts for people try it concentrate on their health don't buy things you know they will not use hallelujah you see someone whose whose leg is is tiny like this you buy you go and waste your money and buy a shoe of over 1 million size 45 that person is not even going to use it are we together you can get health products you can invest fruits veggies you can even buy a book about living in health and give the person you have invested in that person's life i made up my mind that in the name of jesus i will be healthy it's a it's a determination i will be healthy i will be healthy because there is a lot to do for the kingdom and i know how i stretch myself by reason of the work that i do most people see me and say apostle do you rest I, I may not rest every day 
but I've been able to squeeze out a system and at least it's working. Hallelujah. So when you try to call, maybe in the middle of the night, and you say, Apostle, you told us you, you'll be there for us. Remember, I am resting. Remember, I am resting. Because believers have a way of blackmailing you spiritually. They just come up with all kinds of emotions and say, remember you said, I said I will be there for you. Jesus, who said you'll be there for you? Why didn't you quarrel him? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'll be there for you as much as possible. But when I'm, when I'm resting, I'm resting. It's as simple and honest as that. Gone are the days where people shout and say, you are this, and start sending you scriptures and say, listen, the Bible says a shepherd that cannot... Just delete it and rest, please. Allow people to... You, know, you, should, you should be secured enough to not be bullied by all those, those childish things. You see, when you walk yourself and stretch yourself and don't rest and you die, let me tell you what people will say. Hey, yeah. And that's the end of it. I made this mistake when we started newly. I would walk myself and not rest. My deliverance came when I went to a Catholic cathedral. I saw a crucifix. And it occurred to me that I didn't die for any man. Now, I love people. Don't get me wrong. But it was not my face that was on that crucifix. So I will be there for everybody as much as I can. There are pastors and leaders who have thrown their families in disarray, thrown their health in disarray, thrown their finances in disarray, all in a bit to serve people who will largely not be grateful. Love people, but don't be a fool. In the name of Jesus. So seven keys I have given you. Let's do a recap and then we we'll pray and I speak over your life. Spirit, his word was in my bone. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be Holy God's fire!